hello and welcome to Lego Challenge with the Warren County Library System. My name is Sandy Roberts and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library. Um, when we had the Makerspace open at Southwest, I used to host regular Lego building programs there, but with COVID-19, obviously we had to close everything down. So I, over the summer, I started doing Lego Masters and Lego Lovers, and we had uh, a whole series of videos about professional Lego designers and Lego artists and drew inspiration from that. Then this fall, we switched over to Lego Challenges, where we focused a little bit more on some of the art and science and engineering and uh, building techniques that you could use for Legos. Well, this is the last one for 2020, so we'll be uh, changing formats again in the new year with some Zoom calls where we can get together and uh, build Lego with one another online. But uh, today, I want to focus in on our very last Lego challenge. So today we are finishing our planes, trains, and automobiles series with cars, okay? Everybody's favorite vehicle. There are so many different ways that you can build these vehicles and we are going to look at all of them. Everything from small Duplo sets all the way up to life-size moving Lego cars. So some really neat inspiration today. And then of course I have two Lego challenges for you at the end where you can put all of your amazing science and engineering skills to very good use. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Okay, let me just switch over here. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we are, as we have been doing, we're gonna talk about some of the official Lego kits first. Then we're gonna talk about some mocks, some my own creations from the ideas.legos.com site where people pitch their different Lego ideas. Then we're gonna take a look at the works of some of the masters and that's where we're gonna go big. And of course, I have some science, engineering, and Lego challenges for you to wrap it all up. Let's get started. All right, there are a lot of Lego automobile kits out there um, and they cover all the different um, Lego styles. So there are Technics, there are Creator Series, there are Duplos, there's a little bit of everything. So whatever you're into, there's probably a car or a similar vehicle for you with this whole, um, with, with cars. So generally Lego groups them into race cars, police cars or emergency vehicles, vintage trucks, construction vehicles, four by fours, and motorcycles. We're gonna focus on the first couple there because they're more most car-like, most automobile-like, but I do encourage you to look into some of the others because there are some really, really cool um, builds out there. Uh, and like I said, there's literally everything from very simple inexpensive kits to really expensive $300, $400 kits. And you can go well beyond that if you're making your own. So there's a, a wide range here of car construction that you can do. Let's take a look at some of the kits that are out there. Okay, these are some of the race cars. On the left-hand side are some of the more expensive sets that are based on real sports cars that are out there. Um, these are Technic sets, so they're a little tougher to build, but they are fully functional, really cool cars. You could probably, if you were interested in adding motors and lights to these, you could do that. Um, these are expensive kits, they are a lot of pieces, but they are really incredible builds. So they're, you know, a little bit of an investment. More than that, they're great ideas. Just taking a look um, at the instructions provided on the LEGO website, because you can often find, you know, the, the instructions for these, really gives you a sense of how some of these higher end models go together. Um, so if you're interested in that challenge, um, definitely check that out. I actually, um, have one of the Technic sets for this, and it is a really interesting build if you want an engineering challenge. Now on the right-hand side, these are some of the smaller kits. These are more like $15 kits. They're not super expensive, and they give you the basics of building a vehicle like this. Plus, they're really fun race cars to just play with, which is really cool. So if you're someone who's maybe into Hot Wheels or um, things like that, which I was as a kid, I still have all of my Matchbox and my Hot Wheels. Um, these sets are really fun because not only are they fun to build, they don't take forever, they aren't super expensive, but they're also just fun to use. And as you can see, several of the sets now come with little mini figs and tools and other accessories. So there are some great kits out there and they're also a lot easier to find, these style kits. Moving on to some of our emergency vehicles and police line, 
What I love about a lot of the police lines is that they come with scenes. So down here in the bottom, you can see some of the Duplo sets that are out there. And these are really fun. Um, we've got like our little canine officer, which is really cute. Um, this is a great set just to play with and a good simple build for younger kids. Then you get up into like this police station, which is really neat. And again, some custom mini figs that go with that. Another canine, um, some little cones. So you can really kind of create and imagine the story. Um, this is a really cool, uh, basically it's a mashup of a racer and a police car. So that's a really fun kind of middle ground if you want to build something a little bit more uh, fast moving. We've got a really classic police car. This is a fairly inexpensive kit. It's like a $15 kit, a really fun build, nice piece to add to the collection. Um, and then we've got this set, which is, um, I think we, we talked about it way back when we did like water and boats, but this is part of a series where they have um, police kind of on the high seas and Coast Guard type stuff. So this is a really fun set too, if you wanna kind of go off in a little bit different direction. But they have a lot in these lines. If you look in the city collections and the creator select collections, you'll find a lot of emergency vehicles that are really fun builds. Um, and then of course, probably my favorites are the vintage. These are not inexpensive sets. I'm not gonna lie. These, I, don't think, I think the least expensive one is the Mustang at $100. So these are expensive sets. But again, go take a look at how they're constructed because there are some really fun older model cars that are so much fun to model and recreate. Like maybe you have a grandpa that has a really cool car that you would like to rebuild. Um, some of these really bring back memories for me. I'm a big fan of the Mustang, so I love this kit. Um, I love that it comes with all these great engine parts so you can really make it look cool. I love the double-decker bus. That looks like a really fun build, to be honest. That's definitely got a bit of the engineering challenge to it by doing those double levels. And I love that it's got the windows and you can see inside, you can put your minifigs in there. I like whenever I can play with it and tell a story. And then probably one of my favorites here, has got to be the VW Bug. That is an iconic car. This is a really, really nice kit. It is an expensive kit, but you don't have to buy the kit and do all this fancy stuff like the surfboards and stuff. Just creating that shape of that VW Bug is a really fun build. Um, but this makes me remember my mom had a, a blue VW Bug forever. Um, so this was, <laughs> this was a car I remember well. So these vintage lines are really fun. And you'll see when we look at the mocks that rebuilding vintage cars is a really big um, hobby for lots of people. So there are a lot of people out there doing really cool stuff with that. But like I said, going to a Lego site, finding the instructions for these gives you a hint to how to build them yourself. These are meant to be inspiration. You don't have to go drop a hundred dollars on them. Take a look at what you've got in your own house and be inspired by these and by the instructions that are given out with it so you can create your own. Um, here are some of the truck lines. And again, these change very quickly. A lot of the car series are available for a couple of years or even just a year, then they go out of stock and new ones come in because they're so popular. So sometimes it can be hard to find them. They have lots of monster trucks, which are super fun. So you can see, um, again, on the left-hand side, these are the more expensive sets, the larger sets. And on the right-hand side, these are a little less expensive. So this dump truck is super fun. It even comes with a little dumpster. Um, which is pretty neat. This little um, monster race car, again, it's a mashup between the race car and the truck. And I love that it has the flames out the back. I mean, that's pretty cool. And this is just more of a simple monster truck build. And what I love about this kit is you see this little car here, it gives you the pieces to build the little car so your monster truck can roll over it and crush it. You could build that. You don't need a kit to build that. That's pretty fun. You know, like make lots of little cars and then make a monster truck to like run over the cars. Awesome, awesome way to spend some time on a rainy day. Um, these other kits are really cool. You can see we've got like this truck that's actually carrying, um, this is again, also part of their city line with their emergency vehicles because it's got the police helicopter on it, or I'm sorry, I think this is an EMT or a hospital um, helicopter. And then down here, you've got, this is actually a race car carrier. So this was built to carry all your race cars around, to like drive your race cars around, which is kind of cool. Um, so that is a fairly large build. That's a, that's a big kit with a lot of pieces. But if you want something more technical, and this is another one I would suggest if you are interested in the engineering behind some of these pieces, take a look at how this is built 
because it is mobile so you can actually like lift up to get at the cars in between things very cool build all right moving on to some of our mocks okay let's see what others are creating and how they're being inspired so here we start with race cars once again um here's another version of a race car carrier that someone has built um then I love this kind of dune buggy race car mashup, which is really fun, uh, really cute little build. Some classic race cars. Now, if you're into NASCAR or Formula One, how much fun is it to sit down, really take a look at some different pictures from different angles and try and recreate that with your Legos? You know, NASCAR and Formula One are really popular. I know there's a lot of who likes which one best, but they're all tons of fun. So recreating those cars with your Legos is a really great um, hobby. And then this one was really unique. This person suggested a kit on ideas um, where it isn't just the car, but actually an entire like classic car model building set built out of Legos. So you may have seen in hobby shops that you can get kits to build out of plastic pieces that you snap out, put together and paint all kinds of different cars. And model building like that is so much fun. It is definitely something to give a try. Ask for a kit for um, Christmas or um, any holiday or birthday that you have coming up. But I just thought it was really creative that this person recreated that experience through Lego. It's a little meta, but it's very cool. <laughs> I love the creativity of it. Um, here we have some really cool trucks, jumping straight to those. Um, so. I love this fire engine and there are a lot of fire engines that people have built. Um, everything from very classic old fashioned fire engines up to the newer ones. Um, who doesn't love a fire engine? And there are so many different types. What would be a fun project? Go get pictures of the fire department in your town. What engines do they have in your town? And then recreate them with Legos. And I bet if you took a picture of yourself with the Lego fire engine that you built based on your town's Lego, that would be a great idea to send um, your fire department for the holidays as a thank you. That would be a really cool um, thing to do. <laughs> I threw in this FedEx um, truck that somebody built just because it's the holiday season and a lot of us are doing online shopping and I don't know, it just kind of made me laugh to think of somebody building a FedEx truck because, you know, but that's a great way to take inspiration from the real world. We've got some tractor trailers down here, which are really nicely done. Um, I especially love this one on the side because I feel like they just put so much time and effort into really thinking about um, the shape and the detailing on a tractor trailer. Uh, so that's really cool. This dump truck is a huge build. This is actually a pretty big piece that they built. Dump trucks are really fun to build because they've got that hinge to do the dump and figuring out how to build that is really cool. Again, this is probably one that you want to use Technics for. Um, and there are some Technic dumpster um, instructions out there that you can definitely get your hands on and build it. I've done a Technic dump truck, very fun because of that, that motion makes it really cool. Um, so I just, I love that they, this is literally a dump truck that they saw at a construction site and they rebuilt out of Legos. Pretty cool. And then this pickup truck just reminds me a lot of my uncles growing up. They all had pickup trucks like this. So it's a little bit of a nostalgia for me, um, but it's a really nice build. It's simple, it's clean, but it really keeps to the heart of what a vehicle like that would look like. So these are some great ones from the Lego Ideas page. Um, oops, that's trains. I don't know how that slide got in there. Whoops. Um, <laughs> I think I accidentally deleted the wrong one because I had some others to show you, but uh, yeah, I had some vintage cars. Oh, I don't know where it went. Now I'm sad. That's okay, we'll move on. Um, these are some built by Lego professionals. So what you have here is literally, um, the race car and a life size car built entirely out of Technics. That's pretty wild, right? Um, <laughs> what's interesting of course, is that that much Lego weighs a lot less than the actual car, but it weighs a lot and it's tens of thousands of pieces. Um, let me see. I'm going to just blank myself out for half a second so I can show you a little bit of a close up here. One sec. Of. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Too many windows. So, what I love about this is look at those Technic parts and how they all come together. 
I honestly like the look of the Lego car more than I like the look of the real one. Um, cause I just love those geometrical patterns in there. And look, they even did the entire interior. How cool is that? That is a heck of a build, right? Um, <laughs> so I just love the creativity of that one. Oh, it's coming back. All right, moving on. And this is another life size build. In fact, all these masters are life size builds because I'm obsessed a little bit with life sized cars um, built out of Legos. <laughs> so this is a Maserati. What I love about this is that they literally took this car, this model from the Speed series for Legos. So this is like a real kit that you can get and they built it life size out of Legos. So there's the real car, which they scaled down to make a little Lego model out of. And then they, uh, you know, Lego scaled it up again and made it out of Legos, which is just kind of cool, right? Like, I mean, if you're going to do it, go big. But again, you can see the kind of detailing and I'm going to just uh, take myself out one more time so we can take a closer look here. Um, and this is using basically common bricks. Okay. This is just your basic bricks. Now they didn't do the full interior for this one. Um, but they did do the windshield and I just love, look at the curving that they got, the detailing in that. And that again, going back to where we all started at back to school in September, that idea of that offset to give you the curves and you can see they use that really, really well for this set, uh, or for this, uh, build, they really got that shape that you're going to see that aerodynamic shape in these kind of race cars. So I just thought that that was very, very well done. Um, and like I said, I'm just kind of obsessed with people making <laughs> giant Lego cars. We all have our hobbies, right? Um, these are two really fun builds. This is, um, a Volkswagen. Again, I'm a little, I'm really into the Volkswagens. So this is a Volkswagen van. And what I love about it is check that out. They built the interior too. That's, I think that they said that was over 40,000 bricks. It's gotta be even more than that. It was a lot of bricks. But what a really neat build. And I mean, talk about an iconic vehicle to rebuild. And it's just fun. This one on the bottom, though, might be one of my favorites. It's blockier than the others. It's not as realistic. But this was actually built by kids in Germany as part of a fundraiser to raise money for a charity that actually feeds kids in need. So I just love the idea of taking a Lego build and making it an event where like you pay a ticket to be part of the build and then all of that money goes towards kids that need, um, that need help. And of course the kids that needed help also got to be part of the build. So what a fun way to use Legos to make the world a better place. You know, maybe you're someone that would be interested, especially during this holiday season in, um, using your Lego love and your Lego building skills to raise money for a favorite charity. Wouldn't that be a fun, cool thing to do? I had a student years ago, he used to like to build little Lego, um, like sets, like scenes, and he would build them and sell them, um, at a profit or, you know, even just for cost. And he would donate all the money to a charity that he cared about, uh, Heifer International, uh, during this time of year. So I have like a great pirate scene. I've got some, um, video game scenes, but, um, what a cool way to raise money and bring a little joy into the world. So I just wanted to share that one because I thought it was a really cool idea. This one is pretty amazing. Not only is this race car, this dragster built out of Legos, it runs on air, which is going to be our challenge in just a moment. But they literally built this to be able to be driven in. Now it doesn't go very fast, <laughs> like 18 miles an hour, but um, pretty impressive. I'm going to attempt to play this video. We all know this is a little scary when we do this with the technology, but we're going to give it a go and see if this works. Crossing our fingers. Well, let me make sure that the sound is on and it doesn't really, it just has music, but yeah, sound is on. Here we go.
Okay. Tell me that isn't one of the most wild things you've ever seen. <laughs> That's pretty incredible, right? Talk about engineering and design. Now, that is not a project that you're just going to do on a weekend, obviously, but that is a good use of 500,000 bricks if you ask me. So that was pretty incredible. I just had to share that. But that did give me the inspiration for today's um, challenge. Whoop. Here we go. So today's challenge, make an air powered car, Lego car. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to do this without getting into air powered engines. For example, you can build a car where a balloon is attached and that balloon, when you blow it up, will provide the thrust. Or you can build a sail to catch the wind um, and turn on a fan and push your car forward. You want to prototype your car, right? A couple different ways to make sure it either travels a really great distance or moves really quickly. If you want to measure the distance it travels, you're going to want to get a ruler or tape measure and mark it on your floor. If you want to measure how fast it's going, there are a lot of ways to do that, but the simplest is to mark a starting line and a finish line and just use a timer to see how fast it goes over that distance. If it travels that distance in less time, you know that you've increased the speed. Let's take a look at some things to help you with your work. Some books that we have in the library. We actually have an entire Build It um, book on race cars that you can download as an ebook on Hoopla. You can go get it right now. And it's got some really fun builds that would be appropriate for using and modifying for this challenge. I've pointed out the Amazing Vehicles book before, and that has tons of ideas. That's a um, hardcover book that you can borrow in our catalog. Just go to warrenlib.org. Um, this is another Hoopla book, another ebook of Lego action vehicles. So if you want to try something like a fire engine, some of the vehicles in here would be useful for this challenge. And then this one I included just because they are some pretty amazing builds. And if you want to take the engineering challenge of building some of the more complex Lego vehicles, this amazing vehicles book, this is a hard, I think it's a hardcover, right? Yeah, that you can borrow through the library. So check that out because it has got some really cool builds in there and step-by-step -step instructions. Well, not, I don't think they're all step-by-step, -step, but a lot of the intricacies of how to do it. Let's talk about the science here. All of this to get a Lego car to move using only air, you need to, you know, use forces. And a force is just a push or a pull, right? So you push a chair across the, the uh, room, that's a force. You are applying a force. In physics, a force is pretty much any interaction that, when it's not opposed, will change the motion of an object. So the chair is sitting there still, you push it, that's a force, right? And what works against that is friction, which we'll talk about in a moment. When forces are unbalanced, you get motion. When forces are balanced, you don't get motion. So think of, um, you know, maybe at school you've done a tug of war, right? Nothing moves while everybody's pulling the same, but eventually somebody starts to tire and then you get an unbalanced force and somebody pulls and wins. So an, a balanced force, nothing's moving. An unbalanced force, something starts to move. All forces have a direction and a magnitude. And this is important when it comes to cars. Um, basically, the amount of force uh, is a product of how heavy something is and how fast it's moving. So something's going to have more force if it's already in motion, okay? And how heavy something is can affect how much force it can um, put upon another item if it should, for example, hit. Um, in the case of a car, we have a couple of different forces going on. You've got your forward driving force. We call this thrust, and that's your forward motion. So your fan on your, you know, the, the air from the fan on the sail or the air, excuse me, hiccups, air inside the balloon is going to provide the forward thrust, okay? Meanwhile, air resistance, there's, you know, have you ever been in the wind or tried to run really fast? You can feel the air against you. That's resisting your forward motion. So we have unbalanced forces, right? As long as the air resistance is less than your thrust, you're fine. But you have to figure it's there, and that's why cars don't go forever, okay? You can't just push your Lego car and let it just go on across the world, right? Eventually it slows down. 
One of the reasons is because air resistance is pushing against your car, so it's losing that forward thrust. There is also weight in the form of gravity. Gravity is a force that pulls everything towards the center of the Earth. Actually, gravity is a force that pulls any two things together. So gravity is pulling us towards the center of the Earth, and we are pulling up on the Earth just a tiny bit. But remember how I said forces are basically based on how much mass something has? The Earth has a lot more mass. It weighs a lot more than tiny old me. So I only have a little bit of gravity. The Earth has a lot of gravity. Um, but when you take the amount of mass in something and multiply it by the gravity, you get something's weight. And so the weight of the car is always going to be pulling down on it towards the center of the Earth. You also have friction, which works against the wheels of the car. If you ever rub your hands together, you know what friction is all about. It's basically two surfaces coming together and rubbing against each other. And friction works against the thrust of the car too. So you have the thrust of the car going forward, but you also have the gravity pulling down, the air resistance going against it, and the friction going against it. So you need a fairly decent amount of thrust to overcome all those forces trying to keep your car from going forward. Okay? Let's talk a little more about friction because that tends to be the biggest force working against your car, other than just its basic mass and gravity. So keep your car lightweight is what I'm saying. And if you've looked at Formula One or NASCAR ever, you know how much work they put into keeping those cars as lightweight as they can. But friction is a force that slows down movement. It basically happens when any two surfaces rub against each other, okay, move across each other. And how much friction is created is basically dependent on the texture of the surface. So. If you've ever walked across a fuzzy rug, you know that you're not going to slide across that, right? It's got a lot of friction. On the other hand, if you're in your socks and you go across the kitchen floor after mom's or dad's just cleaned it, a lot less friction. You might slip, okay? This is why ice is a problem and grass isn't as long as it's dry. So the texture of the surface is going to affect how much friction you have. The reason I bring this up is when you're thinking about your racetrack for this project, you probably want your kitchen floor <laughs> or your driveway, not your backyard lawn or the carpeting in the living room. Okay. So you want to try and find as smooth a surface as possible to reduce friction. So you get the most forward thrust from your balloon or from your fan. Okay. Some examples of what you can build. Again, frugal fun for boys and girls. I know I've pointed out this website before, but they do have some examples of how you can build a balloon right onto your Lego car. In this one, they use just a little arch of Legos to hold the balloon on. You blow up the balloon, the thrust is going to come out um, where you have the opening, the neck of the balloon. So the um, air is going to go that way, and that's going to propel the balloon forward. Okay, it's going to push the balloon forward, the car forward. Meanwhile, down here, you can see they're just using the power of their own lungs on a sail car, a little piece of paper, right? Um, a couple of Legos to hold it up, or maybe you can use a stick or a popsicle stick or something like that and build that into your uh, Lego car. And you can use the power of the wind in the same way to produce thrust. I love to get out a big old box fan for this and let the cars really fly across the room. So these are two examples of what you can build. Again, you want to keep it low weight so you have the minimal amount of gravity working on it. If you're building a sail, you want the biggest sail that you can manage to get on there. Same with the balloon, the biggest balloon that you can fit on that car. And you want to work against friction as much as possible by choosing a smooth surface for your build. All righty. So that's our inspiration for the day. And I'm going to switch back to my other camera. So now you know what your challenges are. I want you to either go out there and find a car that you want to rebuild and model it. Take pictures, find pictures on the, on the web with your parents' permission, sketch it out, model it, do a little research, see how other people have built cars, and try modeling your own. It's even more fun if you really pay attention to your build, maybe take pictures as you go and share them with others. With your parents' permission, you can always do a TikTok or a YouTube video on your build. Um, it's always cool to share your design work and your engineering and your science with others. Again, with a parent's permission. Um, second challenge, make an air-powered car. Either use a balloon or just a sail attached to your Lego vehicle 
and see how far or how fast you can get it going by maximizing thrust and reducing friction. Okay? Well, that's our last Lego challenge of 2020. It has been quite the journey since March, hasn't it? <laughs> well, I promise I'll be back in January with more Lego fun. I figure we can get together on Zoom and that way we can all share our creations in real time, which would be really fun. So I will be back with all new challenges and fun projects that we can build together. In the meantime, my name is Sandy Roberts for the Warren County Library System. It has been a pleasure to share my love of Legos with all of you. I hope that you stay safe and stay healthy and enjoy this wonderful holiday season. Enjoy spending time with family and um, I will see you in the new year. Take care. <laughs>